Welcome back to Telling God's Story. Last session, we took a look at Kings David and Solomon, which really was the high point of Israel as a nation. Under their rule, the borders were their most secure and most expansive. Uh, today, what we're going to look at is the rest of the time that Israel was a kingdom ruled by kings, a period of time that's often referred to as the era of the divided kingdom, which we'll look at why that is in just a moment. So God had made to David a promise that his descendants would be seated on the throne of Israel, uh, a, a promise that God did keep. Solomon was David's descendant, and Solomon ruled over Israel. Following Solomon, his son Rehoboam inherited the kingdom. Uh, what we'll see is that Rehoboam was not exactly what one would call a wise king. And it was some of his foolishness that led to the kingdom that had been established by his father and his grandfather. Under Rehoboam, that kingdom was broken. So if you would, turn to 1 Kings chapter 12 and go ahead and read through that chapter. Okay, so what we see here is Rehoboam becomes king and the people beseech him, your father was very hard on us. Please lighten up the load upon us. Rehoboam, he goes to his father's advisors and they tell him, yeah, you should lighten up. The people will become loyal to you if you do. And then Rehoboam, he goes to his buddies and his buddies basically tell him, yeah, you've got to put your thumb down on these people so that they respect you and they follow you. Rehoboam, rather than listening to the wisdom of of his father's advisors. He listens to his friends and, well, what rapidly happens is that the people rebel. They refuse. Uh, it, what ends up happening is that the kingdom becomes divided. The tribes in the north break away from Rehoboam from the tribe of Judah, from the, the rule and the reign of the house of David. They establish their own kingdom in the north under Jeroboam, who was sort of the leader of this rabble-rousing that occurred here. And from this point on, you have a divided kingdom. This happens in about 931 BC. And now you have a kingdom in the north, which is often referred to simply as Israel, or occasionally it's referred to as Ephraim. And then you have a kingdom in the south, which is referred to as Judah. So remember, the northern kingdom is Israel, southern kingdom is Judah. Understanding this period of the divided kingdoms and the fact that the kingdom was divided, it's really very important for understanding the prophets that we read in the Old Testament. Because most of the prophets are ministering to one of these kingdoms or the other, even either to the north or to the south. In the south, in Judah, you have David's descendants seated on the throne. Rehoboam and those who follow after them, then they're descendants of David. This is the house of David that rules over the south. In the north, on the other hand, these are not Davidic kings at all. They have nothing to do with David. It's a succession of kings, some of whom follow after their fathers who inherit the kingdom, others of whom ascend to the throne by means of bloodshed or, or other means by which they become kings in the north. God was still reaching out to both of these kingdoms. He did so through his prophets. When we read about the prophets in the Old Testament and their teaching, these prophets are speaking typically to one kingdom or to the other, either to the north, uh, to the kingdom of Israel, or to the south, the kingdom of Judah. Uh, in the north, we see prophets like Elijah and Elisha and Amos. In the south, we see prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. So in both north and south, there are prophets, and through them, God is still reaching reaching out to his people. But his people quite often fail to listen. As we look at both the north and the south, what we see is that both king kingdoms had kings who did what is evil in the sight of the Lord. Typically, that evil in the sight of the Lord consisted of idol worship, or of setting up shrines for worship in places they shouldn't be, and contrary to what God had instructed the people to do. And quite often, it consisted of essentially giving lip service to God and what he had said in his word and through his prophets, while at the same time, they just did whatever they wanted. Now, if we look at the two kingdoms, the kingdom in the north, Israel, they had a 100% success rate or maybe a 0% success rate, depending on how we go about evaluating these things. Basically, none of the kings in the north, not one of them, was considered a good king in the eyes of God. Every single one of them did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Uh, from, from Jeroboam, 
who was the first king, all the way to Hosea, who was the, the last king before the northern kingdom was conquered by Assyria. Every single one did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, before you start thinking the South must be this utopia then, they had the same problem there. Not 100%, but very many of these kings in the South were not doing the right thing. They were descendants of David, but they still did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And yet there are good kings in the South. There are kings like Jehoshaphat and Joash and Hezekiah and Josiah. They have these wonderful, wonderful names. But they also... Some of those kings, a small number of them, were, were faithful, they were loyal, they brought about reforms that returned the people away from the idolatry that had come before them and returned them to worshiping the Lord their God. At the same time, many of the kings were just terrible. And it was the leadership of these terrible kings that led the people to forsake their calling as the people of God. It led them to stray from their God and to turn to the worship of idols. It led them into idolatry and to all sorts of sin. It led them to uh, hating their neighbor rather than loving their neighbor, of taking advantage of others rather than helping them. It led to all manner of unfaithfulness and a, and a lack of godliness. And on account of that, after God for centuries had spoken through his prophets and had called his people to turn from their sin, on account of their failure, on account of their lack of faithfulness, on account of their sin, eventually God let them fall into the hands of their enemies. This happened first with the northern kingdom, Israel, in 722 BC, when the northern kingdom fell into the hands of the Assyrians. Uh, over a century later, in 586 BC, Jerusalem itself fell, and the kingdom of Judah with it fell into the hands of the Babylonians. And so, over the course of that period of time, what we see is that God's people, they're taken off into exile. They're forcibly removed from the land. The, the promised land, the land that the Lord their God had given them as an inheritance that he had first promised to their father Abraham that he had delivered them to when he brought them out of Egypt, brought them into that land under Joshua, that this land that had been theirs for centuries, they lose it. They lose it because of their failure. They lose it because of their lack of righteousness, their lack of faithfulness. Uh, the, the people are exiled and it's because of, of their sin. They lost their land. They lost their status. Now, next time, what we're going to look at is how God gives it back. You see, God has a plan in store for them to give them back what they had lost on account of their sin. Uh, and next time, we'll look at that, the return from the exile and the restoration to the promised land. So join us again next time as we continue telling God's story.